here at Salon Knallbonbon, the one and only salon in the world wide web for kind minds and good spirits, where we all can meet as friends, even complete strangers. So if you like philosophy and beauty, politics, Pokemon, plants, basketball, LGBTIQ, Hannah Arendt, Lenin, Luxembourg, Laurel and Hardy, Outer Space, Elf, Russian Avant-Garde, or if you just like to experience life, like standing in the rain without an umbrella. So stay tuned and have a damn good cup of tea with me. Yeah, frenemies. <laughs> frenemies, I got a lot of new subscribers. That's not that bad, Jenny. But to be honest, subscribers are only subscribers. And in those days, I'm longing for real friends, for real enemies, for true frenemies. So that's why I started to send out friend requests via delivery service. Ja, so ein Theaterstück. And I told a friend of mine in Tel Aviv. Sprat the wood. <laughs> By the way, this friend is also a great designer. Have you noticed any uh, changing in my room? Any difference? Yeah? Did you notice? Yeah. She made an incredible update to my tubes. Flash Gus, you are a flash. And I asked the theatre at the Parkow, which used to be the theatre of friendship, if they could help me find new friends. And they said yes. 
and I asked the FFT, the French, French Theatre in Düsseldorf, and they offered me their help too to find new friends and foes in Düsseldorf. FFT, you are amazing! So today, we have philosophy on tube. I got a letter from a note friend whom I didn't see for years. Dear Jenny, I just read this sentence by Aristotle, which made me think of you, of me. Um, oh, friends, there is no friend. Ah, hi everyone. It worked. There you are. I've got new friends. Isn't that wonderful? And isn't philosophy so much more fun doing it with friends? Yeah, and isn't that what friends are really for? To philosophize? Maybe you could even go as far as to say it is not really philosophy if you do not practice it with friends and for friends. Or oh, as friends. Yeah. And only with true friends you can go so far as to say, Oh, friends, there is no friend. Frenemies, 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 frenemies. Frenemies, 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 frenemies. Hi sisters, Nina here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Oh my god you guys, I am so beyond excited for today's video, I just want to jump right into it. So if you sisters know me, you would know that I love a good competition and I never ever back up from a philosophy challenge as long as it involves beauty because beauty is what makes us friends and to have friends is beautiful and that's philosophy. Okay, so now I'm just gonna start off with the tutorial by going into this really pretty yellow eyeshadow and for that I'm gonna use this brush right here I hope you can see it, yeah. <laughs> and I'm gonna start off with this eye and I'm gonna just put the eyeshadow on my whole lid. So I recently talked to some friends just like you sisters and I asked them what are you gonna do next with your life? And they said, for now, I will take care of myself for a while. Now the other eye. And I said, that's great. Right you are. I really appreciate that you understand philosophy as a search for an individual ethics. Okay, now I'm going to use a flat brush like this one. And I'm going to go into this really bright pink eyeshadow and I'm going to draw a line right over the yellow eyeshadow I just did. 
for your own existence as a person. Why should you not try to make an artwork out of your life? The more beautiful your life gets, the more beautiful the life of your friends will get. Okay, now the other eye. That's exactly what Aristotle said. Those who look feel that they are looking. Just like those who hear feel that they hear. Now, I'm going to use this very vibrant pink eye pencil and I'm just going to draw a pink line right where I just did the line with the eyeshadow. And those who walk feel that they are walking and so on. All other activities are accompanied by the feeling that we do them. So we feel when we feel that we feel. Now you know it, the other eye. And when we think, we also feel that we think which means that we feel that we are. Okay, now I'm just gonna draw a regular eyeliner. Because to be means to feel or to think. And to feel that we live is something nice. Because life is good. Because life is really, really good. Now the other eye, especially, and thus, the feeling to have a good life is pleasant, especially for the ones that feel good, it is nice to exist. And just how you feel this pleasure of your life as a good person, you also feel the same in relation to a friend. Okay, now I'm just going to put highlighter in the inner corner of my eyes. Because what is a friend other than just another self? And that's why we also feel that it is nice that our friends exist. And the way we feel it is by living together and sharing words and ideas. In this sense, we say that people live together as a community. The way you treat yourself, this is the way you want to treat your friend. Okay, now I'm just going to put on mascara. And that's why I was total said, there is nothing more important than friendship. It is even more important than justice or the rule of law. Because if you have friends, you don't need justice or the rule of law. But if you have justice or the rule of law, you will still need a friend to have a good life. Now just on the bottom lashes. And now I'm just going to put on some lip gloss. That's the beauty of it. Love you sisters. And if you like this, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and leave a like. So I just saw Jenny's video of Salon Knallbonbon and uh, it's so nice to see you again because it has really been a while and I also uh, I really love to uh, look at all the stuff in your saloon. It's uh, really nice. So um and I feel uh, very, very, um, yes, very happy for you that you got this uh, great update for your tubes. And, um, but the last sentence you said, or the sentence you got from the friend who wrote this letter to you, uh, really confused me. So, I mean, you, uh, you said, oh, friends, there is no friend. And, um, and 
this is something um and then you even said only with true friends you can go so far as to say oh friends there is no friend and it's really confusing um i would love if you can explain the sentence a bit more because i mean if you have a group of people and you tell them oh friends there is no friend um so then you then you can really not say the sentence um or maybe it's a metaphor and then i thought maybe then it's like you would go to a forest and say oh forest there are no trees um and then i wondered about the plants in my room and i realized that plants also have a lot of tubes um so i don't know if you know this but they they have also like a tube system inside of them which Uh, transport all the minerals and sugars and the water and they run from the end of the roots until the top of the leaves and I thought that's really fascinating because then I was again uh, by the tubes and um, yes but the sentence still confuses me a lot so I would love to hear to hear what it means and um, then also the forest and the trees were like stuck in my mind so i wonder actually i don't know how many trees you need until you can say this is a forest um and then maybe because i don't have a challenge for today maybe this could be my challenge and um so i thought maybe i just count the trees or i just count how many trees do you need until you can call them a forest because I really don't have an answer to this and I would love to know how many trees do you need to say that's a forest now and uh, I already because I'm um, uh, so here I already have a a notebook here and also a pencil and then I thought I maybe just start to count those trees and um, Yes, I'm very curious to, uh, I need to find an empty page. I'm very curious to uh, find out how many trees we need for a forest. And then I thought I just start to count. So um, I start with tree number one. So we have one tree, two trees, three trees, four trees, five trees, six trees, seven trees, eight trees, nine trees, Make the virus a friend, but isn't a friend also like a virus? She he enters your life, starts to live inside yourself, so you cannot distinguish what is yourself and what is not yourself, what is inside and what is outside. Hey Mark, I really need to ask you something. Would you still be my friend if I would move to Mars? When the Earth or Mars makes no difference to me on the moon. Of course. Oh, it's beautiful. If I changed my voice to a much lower voice and laughed out loud all the time, <laughs> would you still be my friend if I dyed my hair orange? And would you still be my friend if I showed you my elf? Would you still be my friend if I wore elf t-shirts, elf yeah. socks, elf baseball caps, elf underwear? Would you still be my friend if I wore all that out of stuff while reading the communist ma- communist manifesto to you? Of course. Would you still <laughs> Would you still be my friend if I told you that I am half Leninist and half Luxembourgist? 
And would you still be my friend if I told you that I am more Luxembourgist than I am Leninist? Yeah. Would you still be my friend if I told you that I was half Stalinist and half Trotsky, <laughs> half communist and half capitalist? Yes, Yochai, I would still be your friend. Me too, Yochai. I, I would still be your friend if you were half communist and half capitalist. Aren't we all in a love and hate relationship with the market system? Hm? 45 trees. 46 trees. 47 trees. Trees. 48 trees. 49 trees. 40, 50 trees, 51 trees, 52 trees. Hey guys, sorry I'm late, as always. But you know, as soon as I'm there, I'm really there. But uh, now to Jenny. Wow, what a magnificent update on your tubes and all that. I have also updated my tubes via Flashkiss um, from Tel Aviv. Huh? I'm such a big fan of tubes, especially um, I've fallen in love with this one because it connects me to my friends all over the universe and the world. And why I am so interested in these tubes you ask because I deal with them uh, on a daily basis I work as an intensive care units nurse and help patients and doctors and uh, so I know there are different kind of tubes in ourselves as well like our airwaves which one we can breathe or our uterus our ears our intestines um, our nerves and blood vessels so um, yeah they are fundamental for us as social beings but also for us to survive uh, like those kind of tubes uh, one receives when the airways don't function anymore we get intubated and connected to a ventilation machine and get updated our tubes so we can have a connection to the outer world again it's just a big network of tubes that makes an uh, organism out of us. Birth tube. Death tube. Love tube. Hate tube. First tube. Food tube. Loose tube. Body parts to fish and to you to we all to truth to fake to private to public to political to unfriendly to music to to but to 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 holy to good to bad to nice to not so nice to third to garbage to all shit to a, B, C, T, letter T, typo T, N, T, N, S, T, wrong T, right T, left T, philosophy T, confused T, brain T, off T, yum T, yuck T, eyes T, cute T, trans T, LGBTQ, QIA plus T, straight T, Life tube, death tube, you tube, do you tube, you tube, impossible, impossible tube, to. Impossible to. to be continued Hello, hola, 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 h
Leia loves liquid energy, so today we're doing something different I don't normally do. Normally I just go around in Berlin, skating, showing you the most amazing places to skate or just chill with your friends. But I think it was important to talk about this, so before we get into this video, like and subscribe. Um, so I was skating with my friend Nina the other day, and it got me thinking, what is the most important thing in life? Not energy drinks, no, um, but more like friendships and finding yourself. I know I don't normally talk about this, but hear me out. Okay, so let's start. Um, some people travel to the end of the world just to meet who they're themselves. It's like the fairy tale of the hare and the hedgehog. You stand in front of a mirror in some hotel room and you won't believe your eyes. What are you doing here? It's not easy to get rid of yourself. That's why you need to make friends with yourself. I don't know if you read Hannah Arendt. I think she's absolutely amazing. I love her. And for that reason alone, I think Hannah Arendt was absolutely... And for that reason alone, I think Hannah Arendt was absolutely right when she said that a friend is not an alter ego, but your ego should become your friend. Well, that's how she wrote it in her Denktagebuch. And that's exactly how I wrote it in my Denktagebuch. I used to call my Denktagebuch Leah's mean thoughts, but not like nasty or mean-spirited. Well, that too, of course. But more like common. Leah's common sense. Because you need at least two to get to the truth, right? That is so true, that could have also been for me. I mean, I've used that so much in the meantime, it's like basically from me now. I do believe that you can make a thought of your own by using it often in conversations. So feel free to use the thought as much as possible next week. Actually, that would be a good challenge. No, that would be a damn good challenge. That is my challenge for all of you. Use the thought as much as possible next week, count it, and he or she who uses that thought the most when that's all for a week. Actually, let's think about that. Even better, let's think about that. A vaccine, a viral vaccine, a live vaccine, a mixed vaccine. 
oral vaccine, a, a flu and mouth vaccine, a flu vaccine, a vaccine cooler, a vaccine failure, a growing vaccine hesitancy, our worst friends, best enemies, eternal frenemies. Do you have any? And if so, how many do you personally need to stay healthy? Mentally. Is that really a question of mentality? A moral quality? Coral capacity and audacity to ask? Hi Murph. Another important question. Would you still be my friend if I wore a glittery red outfit? Sure. Do whatever makes you happy. Yeah. Hey Murph. Would you still be my friend if I told you that I don't like dogs? Uh, sure, but it's arguable, right? I guess. Hey Murph, what about if I wore different socks all day? Would you still be my friend then? That's a drip, Karen. Du willst ein Taste von meinem Cake? Steh nie in der Küche, doch ich bake in meinem Face. Keine Gäste lässt er, aber ein Lass ist safe, weil ich hab Haare, Nägel, Make-up, alles on fleek. Fleek, 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 fleek. Guck in den Spiegel und bin verliebt. Lieb, lieb, lieb. Hi, Friends. It's really nice that you are all here. Um, I wondered, who is your best dad friend? Because my best dad friend is Hannah Arendt. And Hannah Arendt's best dad friend was Rahel van Hagen. And I thought, if Rahel van Hagen is Hannah Arendt's best dad friend, then she should definitely also be one of my best dad friends, you know? Mm. I mean, I, I will tell you why. Uh, Rahel was a Jewish woman who knew a lot of important people back in the day. And she had a saloon, just like Jenny. In her saloon, they really, really loved to talk about Goethe. Probably because he's super German. That was at least my first thought, but no, it was because Goethe embodied the idea that um, one should make one's own life an artwork. And that is how Rahel lived with the contradictions in her life. The fact that she is an exception of an underprivileged group, like she was Jewish and hosting a very important saloon in Germany, you know? So she was an outsider camouflaged with the lyrics of Goethe. And because of that, I think we share some similarities, you know, like a lot of kids in the diaspora, while our parents have been the outsiders, the Ausländer, we have been able to camouflage with a, with a little help of like friends like Bertolt Brecht, um, Enisa Amani, Monroe Bergdorf, Franz Kafka, Haftbefehl, I hope you're watching, but probably not, Walter Benjamin, Celo and Abdi, Audrey Lord, Anna Segers, Nura, Ronja Othman, I know you are watching, hi, uh, Karo Stalha, Olga Grasnova, and um, Bini Adamczak. And last but not least also, and of course, Hannah Arendt. So back to Rahel, she knew about this contradiction in her life. And she wrote a letter to a very old friend of hers. Um, you can find it in this book. It's a very big book and it's also like a very expensive book. Anyway, it's very interesting. So she wrote in this letter to her friend who was uh, Jewish as well, um, you can't assimilate if you only give up your own past, but ignore the past of the people who want to assimilate you because you would only assimilate to the same racism that forced you to assimilate in the first place. So you're trapped and you only wish to be an exception in order to be normal. Luna, dear, it is better you accept that it is 
normal to be an exception. And only if you learn to live with it, how exceptionally normal you are, you can unite with all the other exceptionally normal people and start to act together. That is power. That is people's power. And that is what we want, my friends. Liberty, equality, and friendship for all. Jetzt machen, weil noch halt irgendwie noch halt Ja, jetzt gerade ist so cool, dass ich jetzt, ja. dass jetzt die Masken nehme. Mal ganz kurz nur einen Test machen. Und bitte. Schläft ein Ding in jedem Dumm. Wir wollen Freundschaft mit den Dingen schließen. Die Dinge sind unsere Freundinnen. Wir wollen Dinge! Wir wollen Dinge! Wir ja! wollen Dinge! Wir sind Dinge! Ja! Wir sind alle Dinge! Ja! Allerdings! Allerdings sind wir Dinge! Es schläft ein Dumm in jedem Ding! Ding, ding, ding! Ding, ding, ding! Ding, ding, ding! Ding, ding, ding! Unbedingt! Eine unbedingte Freundschaft mit den Dingen! Ja! Wir ja. müssen uns über die Bedingungen klar werden! Ding, ding, ding! Was ist die Bedingung für jedes Ding? Ding! Ohne Bedingungen kein Ding! Es ist nicht ein bedingungsloses Grundeinkommen für Menschen, wenn das Ding nicht mit in Rechnung gestellt wird. Jedes Ding ist ein Ding. Jedes Ding braucht ein Ding. Freundschaft mit den Dingen. Freundschaft! 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 Vollversammlung der Dinge! Ein großes Ting! Eine Ting-Versammlung mit den Dingen! Kein Parlament der Dinge, sondern ein Dings! Ein, ein Ding! Ein riesen Ding wird das! Das ist ein riesen Ding! Das Ding mit dem Ding! Das Ding an sich gibt es nicht! Es gibt nur die Dinge! Und wir alle! Alles, was es gibt, ist bedingt. Bedingt. Es gibt keine unbedingte Existenz. Einer dieser menschlichen Warnträume. Es gibt nur die Bedingungen. Zwei, drei, vier, fünf. Und wieder nach gerade aus. Eins, zwei, drei, vier, fünf. Nach rechts. Eins, zwei, Wir sind alle bedingt. Niemand ist unbedingt. Und wir werden hier nicht länger reden, als es unbedingt nötig ist. Dass das mal klar ist.
I did not get your last sentence. What? I can't hear anything. I can hear you, but you can't hear me. Yeah, I see you. Our connection is really bad. I see you, but I don't hear you. What? Maybe my internet is lost. I can't see you. And I can't hear you either. What did you say? Can't hear you. Could you repeat what you just said? I'm sorry, what did you just say? You are muted. You're very, very quiet at the moment. What? You are frozen. What is that noise? I'm not a tomb. Was hast du gesagt? You are frozen? No, I hear you twice. Oh, oh, are you thinking? You are muted! What did you say? Hello? I lost you! I can see you, but I can't hear you! Did we lose Jenny? Begum? Maybe your internet is lost. Could you mute yourself? I don't hear you. I'm not a tube! I'm not a tube! I'm not a tube! each other better yeah uh, what is one hundred what is Finn doing uh, two hundred eight Finn is of course still <laughs> counting um, I don't know how to bring that up but I definitely want to and um, I don't want to sound impolite or anything but what if you would you ask me, I never like counting um, because, I don't know, counting for me just means excluding. It's like this children's game, you know, like four, three, two, out are you. Like even if you count votes to make a decision in a fair way, 
I don't like it. And it's not because I uh, like uh, dictatorships or anything, but it's, I mean, even if there's a majority, you know, the problem is that there is also a minority and this minority would just not have the same power. Um, yes, that's of course true. I mean, if you, if you need to count votes, then the minority um, in a democracy does not really get what they wanted or what they voted for. But then, um, I mean, then, then this system really makes no sense. But um, I think for this, what we have right now, and this is, um, I, um, I mean, a democracy, then um, if we just here, we just need to count because a democracy depends on counting. So, okay, um, but I don't know what makes you so sure. Two hundred ninety-eight trees. I mean. I mean, I would absolutely uh, love to make something else up or to, I mean, if have or invent another system. Um, yes, I mean, why not? That would be a lot of fun to do it. But um, I mean, when we have this democracy thing, still, we just need to count. And then we also want to make sure that every single vote is counted. Um, because here every single vote counts and for this we just have to count okay um that might be true for democracy but let's think about for example marginalized communities or like we are friends right so as friends would we count votes? I mean, like, if I say no, and you and Jenny say yes, you wouldn't take that decision, would you? Um, I mean, of course not. And then I also don't know about what we spoke, but um, if we say yes and you say no, then of course we would talk about it and I mean, then, of course, just counting yes and no would be very stupid. And then, um, I mean, then you have to decide when makes counting sense and when makes counting not so much sense and not just count. Um, and maybe I also don't know what was the question and maybe the answers were also really not, uh, not so good. I mean, maybe we not only need to have yes and no, but also maybe yes and maybe no and maybe just a bit and definitely not um but for this right now i think that counting trees does make a lot of sense but i'm not so sure about that one i mean what counts counts every tree counts every vote counts every tube counts every friend counts that's the fact that we, what also counts is, is not only what is counted, but also the amount of time that is needed to count, because time also counts. Time counts. In, in democracy, we are talking and talking and, and, and questioning everything. And in the end, I just get dizzy. Dizzy democracy. I always thought that philosophy is not for the many, but for the few. You did it again. You were counting. But isn't that how we got started? We asked ourselves how many we are as friends. And who counts and who is counted? But what does that mean? Does it mean that we went in circles and and ended where we began? Oh, oh friends, friends, there is no friends. There is no friends. Is a friend like a vaccination?
that may be the case, but what if you have an immune response and your immune system cannot handle it or handles it too well and treats it as if it was an alien invasion? Have I ever had an immune response to a friend? Beyond binarities. Sure, I would love it. Would you still be my friend if I told you from now on I wish to live as Rosa Luxemburg rather than Lenin? Yes, I would still be your friend if you decide to live as Rosa Luxemburg and not as Lenin. But would you still be my friend? If I decide that from now on I'm going to live as a black square? Yes, I would still be your friend. Because you know what Malevich said about Lenin? Um, would you still be my friend if I confess to you that I don't know what Malevich said about Lenin? Yes, I would still be your friend even if you did not know that Malevich said that Lenin did not want a portrait of himself, but Lenin wanted to be pure matter instead. And would you still be my friend if someone said to me, what's the matter with you? And I would answer, I am Lenin. And would you still be my friend if I asked you to print posters of my black square and put them up all around Tel Aviv? Then people would say, the revolution is here. Yes, I would still be your friend if you, as a black square, told people that you are Lenin and if you ask me to bring posters of you and put them up all around Tel Aviv. But, would you still be my friend if I confess I don't actually like Russian cinema that much? That I find it boring and melodramatic and why does it always end up being about... Russia? I would still be your friend even if you find Soviet cinema too Russian. <laughs> but would you still be my friend if I doubted if that was better than the fact that you as a peacenik are dating an IDF soldier? Hi, I'm Felix. I'm doing my internship in Frenemies Forever. But I just wanted to say, count me in, count me out. The important thing is that we can count on each other. Without others, we are nothing. There might be a capitalistic talk about independence and such, but we as humans are so to say dependent as fuck. Let's be friends with many, not only in pairs. I think we need solid net. No. Solid nets. Plural. Nets to inspire each other. To criticize and to get lost in each other. In a way, like that tube network. 371 trees. 372 trees. Let us build endless nets. Many to many networks. 
Whenever it comes to an end, there will be a smooth transition to another net with other little centers and plateaus. It exceeds the countable, the controllable, and it's inherently fluid. So we need to trust in ourselves, in others, in the good life for everyone. I know, it sounds hippie, but if we stick together, it might work out. So stop counting. Stop the count! Okay, good. No, not you. You keep counting. Keep counting and let's figure out what it means to count on each other. Because in the end, that's the only thing that really counts. Oh, hey, what's up, Nina? Um, are you also thinking about that one sentence from Jenny Sander Klammerborn that uh, Jenny's old friend quoted? I think it went like, Oh, friend, there is no friend, something like that. Oh, friends, there is no friend. Well, did you know that it's actually not from Aristotle, but it's from Montaigne? Montaigne just made it up himself and said it was from Aristotle. Pfft, now that's smart. I mean, think about it. Philosophy can be so easy. As Hegel once said, if you drink enough energy drinks, you'll see the light. Yeah... Right, and as Immanuel Kant used to reply, always only tell that kind of bullshit that you yourself would like to believe in. You know what, Leia, I don't care who made up Jenny's sentence, because I believe it's truly philosophical and beautiful. So, it actually fits to my channel. Philosophy is beauty after all. I mean, just take a look in the mirror and say the words, Oh friends. There is no friends. Isn't that what you always say, Leah? You need at least two to get to know the truth, right? I guess I have owned that sentence now for a week. But you know what? Sometimes you get so annoyed by these two that you are, that you just need a friend to get you out. Hi. Um it's me again. So, did you know that the word for friend in Arabic means Rafiq? And it goes back to the verb Rafaka, which actually means to accompany someone. So, the question is, towards what? To get a corona test or to get vaccinated? I like, I would love to go to the beach or on a date. And I think the best idea would be to go to a demonstration or maybe um, a party meeting because uh, the word Rafi is also used to describe a camarade. You know, in Hebrew, the most common word is chaver, which comes from lechaber, meaning connecting or assembling something. Maybe like tubes. Oh, that reminds me of a joke about a capitalist and a worker. It goes like this. A capitalist says to a worker, how beautiful is it to find someone who asks for nothing but your company. The worker says, okay, give me your company. And the capitalist says... In older Hebrew, the words Anit, Haver, Yadid, and Rea were all synonyms to describe close relationships between people that are not necessarily family. Amit has become a word to describe colleagues, and Rea became a word to describe pals in the army, and Yadid became a word to describe a friend with whom you had no sexual relationship. That's true. Haver is very broad. Boyfriend, comrade, and member. Sometimes it gets pretty confusing because every boyfriend is a friend, but not every friend is a boyfriend. So, you mean Yadid describes a weaker friendship than Haver? K 
Can there be levels of friendship? A friendship hierarchy? Can I be a friend but just a little? Only on Thursdays? Only when you apply a dinosaur filter? Did you see that stupid cat? Anyway, um, I thought about the hierarchy of friendship and it made me wonder whether such a hierarchy would actually betray the fundamental idea of friendship, you know, because friendship is a proactive engagement with plurality. And I mean, that's uh, what Hannah Arendt believes politics is all about, you know, the fact of plurality, the fact that we are many. Um, I guess that's also because, oh, that's also why um, she didn't really like philosophy because philosophers always talk about men while she always talks about many, you know? And this is also how I understand that sentence by Aristotle. I guess now it's by Jenny. Um, I would translate it like or interpret it like um, all friends there is not one single friend, only many. And that is uh, why I think um, friendship is political. This is exactly why I decided to live as Rosa rather than Lenin, after reading Hannah Arendt's portrait of Rosa's close peer group, a sort of radical party within a party of Jewish-Polish socialists. They were always on the opposition to something. From my very limited experience, I think I can somehow relate. Last year I did my volunteer year of service, which was affiliated with a lefty youth group. The assignment was both practically and ideologically a complete mess, and we had little to no guidance in our group dynamics. This created a very us-versus-everyone feeling, both politically and emotionally. When I look back at that, I must admit I feel pretty conflicted. It was all one big mess, but the connections formed were deep and true. I never had closer friends, or maybe closer frenemies. Is your friend your foe? I'd say yes and no. I say all oh, frenemies. There is no frenemy, not a single enemy, only unfriended ex-lovers to be, post-best pals, no longer close cronies, on again, off again, sunshine and roses, and thorns without roses. Yeah, friends, I know exactly what you mean. It is Tavarici in Russian. Or, um, but uh, Draghi Tavarici in, in, in ceremonial speeches say, dearest comrades, it comes from Druk, which means friend or Drugia. So you can also speak to an audience, Drugia. So I say, friends, Drugia. Well, well, what is Finn doing? Four hundred fifty-seven trees. Four hundred fifty-eight trees. Four hundred fifty-nine trees. So we still have four hundred sixty trees. Four hundred sixty-one trees. Four hundred sixty-two trees. Four hundred sixty-three trees. 464 trees, 465 trees, 466 trees, 467 trees, 468 trees, and 469 trees make a forest. So Nine trees. Okay. No.
Oh, Finn, that is really great. That's so cute. You counted all yeah. those trees for us. Yeah. And now we know exactly how many trees it takes to build a forest. Okay. We, we still have no clue how many friends it takes to build a mess, but never mind. It's, it's, it's okay. You, you did all that work for us. And mm. we, as your friends, yeah, we prepared mm. a little gift for you. No. Wait a moment. Oh, no. A little gift? You prepared a little yeah. gift? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, here. Oh, no. Okay. Surprise, surprise. My so, have a look in your tube. Oh, um, okay. So, um, what uh, do we have here? So, you sent me, um, um, you sent me this here. So this is actually something I uh, I wonder how you found it out. So this is a little figure of a fish, and um, I had this uh, figure before, and it's actually um, a Pokemon, and it's very um, it's very nice to see it again. So um, I don't know if you know, but the story behind this Pokemon fish is actually very sad. And when I um, read it the first time. I it almost made me cry. So, um, uh, so they say that this fish is actually very ugly and that no one likes it because it's so ugly and that only when it evolves to the next level it would be considered to be very nice and very beautiful. But I especially looked for a figure of this fish here. So the story made me really sad and I also don't understand why someone would say this fish is ugly because it's actually very nice and um, and then I ordered this one here and when it arrived it, it I laughed a lot because I thought it's more of this size like a like a bigger figure and uh, this was a rhyme by mistake <laughs> um, and then I got this here and this was very funny because I'm actually very bad with measurements and numbers and I just expected it to be more of this size and then I received this and <laughs> this was really like very typical for me and then I ordered a second one which you also sent to me so um, this was the second one I ordered and um, because this was what I actually wanted <laughs> um, and but this is why I had two in the end and then they were always uh, in my shelf and um, I I really like them there and without them it looks really empty so um, to look at the empty place makes me really sad and then it's really nice that I have them now again so uh, I wonder how um, how you knew it <laughs> but it's very nice that I have them now and um, then I maybe place them back so thanks a lot for the surprise that's very nice <laughs> what a wonderful story Finn Darling, mm -hmm. really, and so nice that you shared it with all mm -hmm. your nine new friends here. So I think it is time for a damn good cup of tea, isn't it? For me, friendship is like a gift in both English and German. A present and poison, or poison as present. Poison in such small doses that your body reacts to it, but remains victorious and thus grows stronger until we finally learn to accept that we have always hosted aliens. We have aliens inside, but a friend, a true friend, is like another self outside. So, we get what we already have, and we give away what we don't have. And yes, you can call that love if you want. Would you still be my friend? Yeah, yeah, sure. God damn it. Yeah, I would still be your friend if you would shave your head or move to Mars or 
invent a new atom. I'm your friend. I'm your friend. Your friend. I'm your friend. Friend, friend, friend. I'm your friend. Your friend. Your friend, friend, friend. Friend, friend, friend. Friend. I'm your friend. For me, a friend is also like a sailor. After all, there is a ship in friendship. And sometimes this ship might be in troubled water. And as a friend, you do not stand ashore and watch the ship being tossed around by giant monster waves. But you you jump in the water and try to rescue the crew because this is what friends are for to give promises to be a promise because what other remedy do we have as humans for this unpredictability for this chaotic uncertainty of the future if not the faculty to make and keep promises think about it only by binding ourselves through promises can we set up a small number of islands of security without which continuity let alone durability would be possible in this ocean of uncertainty. Because that's what the future is by definition, uncertain. So we need these small little islands, yeah, without which not even continuity, let alone durability of any kind, would be possible in the relationship between people. So if someone says, oh friend, there is no friend, this might be nothing but a plea, a call for friends to be, a SOS signal. It says, be my friend. It's also a promise to become a friend yourself because if you're not ready to be a friend yourself, how can you expect someone to become your friend? Ahoy! Shoes on that! Last night I dreamed about living on the earth, 
Although I love living on the moon, I sometimes wish I would be able to do things that you on Earth can easily do, like walking through the woods or... Dear Ma, I can understand that you feel lonely sometimes. I also feel lonely. Dear Layla, dear Ruth, I would also like to go in the woods, but sometimes I feel super powerless. Do you hide? It's great that you are super powerless. That is rare. The only superpower I would like to have is a virtual body. Dear Jenny, I see. I would also like to know how it feels to merge into the body of another one, and how... Dear Jenny, dear Yochai, your virtual body makes me think. Isn't that what friendship used to be all about? One soul inside of two? Dear Ethel, Jenny and Yohai, now that Facebook has become so toxic, I felt I have to leave. But now, I feel like the stateless person that... Dear Luna, I had a vision of falling into a rabbit hole last night. But the thing was, it never ended and... Dear Biggie, dear Luna, I also had a dream last night. I fell through time and dimension. I think there is no end because... Dear Nina, Luna, Ete, Begum, Jenny and Yohai, I like the idea of friendship for life, not only as a state of... Dear Begum, last night I heard my plants growing again. When it's silent, you can hear how the leaves touch each other. When they open, then you know that... Dear Finn, my plants don't make noises, or maybe I sleep too deep when I come home from. Dear Nina, Luna, Leia, Layla, Ethel, Begum, Murph, Jenny, and Finn. As a Marxist, I am wondering whether the qualitative leap also applies to friends. That would explain. Dear all, the answer is yes. What was the question again? Dear Nina, Leah, Luna, Leila, Itel, Merv, Begum, Finn, and Yuhai, don't forget that there is also the phenomenon of feeling super lonely when you are actually super famous. So maybe we should improve our theory the more. Dear friends, of course the answer is yes. The question is not where, the question is when. Dear best of all, yes, yes, yes! Where and when again? Dears, that's great! Let's do it! You already know where. The only question is when. Now, I propose... Bingo! Five o'clock! Five o'clock after the... Five o'clock after the pandemics! Yes, I would even say five minutes after the pandemics! Five minutes after the... Five minutes after the pandemics! Alright everybody! 
five minutes after the pandemics, we meet at Jenny's Salon Knallbonbon in 3D, in color, live, and meet the other exceptionally normal people. Deal? Thank you.